Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our YouTube Live Trending Thursday. My name is Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. Always my pleasure to be here. All of my new people that are here, uh, take off your shoes, get comfortable, enjoy uh, what's going to go, ha what's going to happen right now. Also, to let you know, this is also going to be on a podcast. All right. So many of you who may have missed it live, like we're doing right now, uh, you can listen to this later at a different time. But on your on your mobile device as a podcast, you can go to any podcast ability to go do so, and um, it's good to go. Uh, what is that? Vector. We have the store now below the video. Oh, we got the store below the video. Oh, we got the store. The store is up and going. So um, if you look below the video, look down below the video, you'll see a link to the store. You can buy a Vector Vest mug. Today, we are giving away mugs. Yes, did no. we? We're not? No, tomorrow. Uh, next uh, Wednesday. It's next Wednesday? Oh, oh at the Hot Stop panel. All right, so we're giving away mugs next Wednesday here on YouTube on our hot stock panel. But if you are now interested in getting your own mug, look below. You can now purchase your own mug. So guess what? I don't need to see mug in the room today. If you want your own mug, by all means, please. Levy Nation, support us. Support us. Um, where's my mug? What did you do to my mug for the longest time? That's not the mug. I, I had a different mug, and I went looking while you weren't here. I couldn't find them because you have them stashed somewhere. Anyway, say hello to Joey. Joey is my producer. Say hi, Joey. Hi, Joey. There you go. He's my right-hand guy. He makes sure that everything is good to go. So I'm glad that the audio is coming across. I'm using a different mic. Now I don't have to have a mic on my chest anymore. I'm not mic'd up. I have my desk mic that I use for the Jockey Club now being used in Trending Thursday. So, again, welcome to everyone. Glad you're here. And again, if you're going to be listening to this by podcast, sit back, take a listen. And, you know, hopefully you may find some stocks that you like. Um, you may find some stocks to stay away from. But what we do here on Trending Thursday is we look at stocks that are making the news. We analyze them in the VectorVest software, and we help you make determinations on when the right time is to buy them, if it's getting close to a right time, or if it's not the right stock to be in at the right time, at this particular point in time. So with all of that being said, the first thing we always start off with is what's going on in the market. For those of you who may be brand new, there's three things that move markets globally. Earnings, interest, and inflation. I don't care what you hear from anybody else. Those are the things that are moving the market globally. There's a lot of other macro things, a lot of micro things, but those are the three main things. Think about it. If I'm a company, if my earnings are up, it puts more money in my pocket to invest in R&D, to hire more people, to pay raises. If interest and inflation rates are low, it costs me less to buy things. And if I have money borrowed and I have low interest rates, then it's uh, less money out of my pocket to pay back the loan. So earnings is the good guys where interest and inflation are the bad guys. The Goldilocks scenario in a market, in a good bullish market, is you want to have earnings rising, interest, and inflation rates falling. All right, so let's see where we stand right now. Well, earnings are still going up overall, and I know that with the coronavirus hit, I'm going to tell you that let's take a look and keep in mind what's going on in the third quarter. The third quarter of earnings is going to be the telling sign of how hard coronavirus has hit the United States. So stay tuned for that. Right now, interest rates are still at historic lows. We have them between zero and a quarter percent. So from an interest perspective, people can still borrow money and pay back. Uh, at a much lower rate. And inflation still is in place where the Fed says that it's okay. It's not a problem. All right, so we're still sort of sitting in the Goldilocks scenario, even though COVID-19 affected the market. So how is that happening? Well, I'll tell you how it's happening. Because this is a Fed-induced market. What do I mean by that? The Fed has put a lot of money behind our economy to keep our economy strong as compared to a lot of other global economies. I believe we still have the strongest dollar in the, in the world right now overall to include China and everybody else. So a lot of other countries are going through recessionary um, scenarios. We're not quite there yet and the market is still trying to show that it's got legs 
and that it still wants to go, but that's because the Fed has put a lot of money behind it, and our own government has put out a lot of money, a lot of stimulus, stimulus, why don't you say it right, Joey? I'll work on it. Okay, a lot of stimulus um, to keep the market up. So all of those things, the market is still rising. It pulled back a little bit, but the market is trying to show signs of making a move again. So let's go to our homepage. This is where we start to look. If you're not a VectorVest subscriber, Joey is going to type in the room a link for you. If you're not a VectorVest subscriber, this is the software that we used here on Trending Thursdays called VectorVest. If you're interested in taking a trial to the VectorVest software, Joey is typing a link in the room where you can take a 30-day trial to VectorVest for 99 cents. For 99, that's an unheard of price. 99 cents uh, to take the trial. So this is the software that we're using, and we use it to analyze the market, to time the market, and to analyze individual stocks. And I will break down for you how our analysis works on the stocks that we're going to take a look at today. So let's start off with the major indices. All of the major indices are up today. The Dow has got a nice up day, up about 253 points, or sitting at about 1% move on the day. The NASDAQ is exactly at 1%. The S&P is at about almost 1%, we'll say a 0.95%. And our vector vest composite is up about 8 tenths, almost 9 tenths of a percent. So as we look at the Dow, it tracks 30 stocks. The NASDAQ tracks about 4,300 stocks. And the S&P 5 and 100 track 5 and 100 stocks, respectively. What makes our vector vest composite different, different from all of those other the indicators. Well, our vector vest composite tracks the movement of 8,219 stocks. 8,200 stocks in one ticker symbol. And because we feel uh, with all of those stocks that we track that it is a better representation of the broad market movement, thus the reason we use it for market timing. So you only get the VVC or the Vector Vest composite as a Vector Vest subscriber. So all of the major indices are up today. In the market timing gauge, uh, the color guard right now is mildly bullish, and we say from it, um, a, a perspective of guidance, VectorVest does advocate caution when buying stocks at this time. So we want you to buy undervalued stocks rising in price in the rising market right now. So I said caution. The caution comes in when I look at the color guard down below, and all we track three uh, indicators in the color guard. We track the price of the vector vest composite. We track the relative timing of the market, which is the short-term price trend of the market. And we track the BSR or the buy to sell ratio, which looks at the overall health of the market. We track these indicators on both a week over week and day over day basis. And we use that information to gather the lights that you see in the color guard every day. Notice the, and I tell people and teach people to use this color guard like a traffic light. What's the main light you see today? Yellow. What does that mean when you get to a yellow light? You slow down. The same kind of scenario. This is a time to slow down, but we have a green light in the color guard pricing column today. We've got more of a bullish day today. The primary wave has been back and forth between down and up, but now up for two days in a row. The primary wave is the week over week movement of the price or the vector vest composite. It tells me is the market moving up on a week over week basis or not. So for the last two days, the market is moving higher on a week over week basis. So that's what the market looks like right now. We've got more of a bullish tinge, but be careful, we've got more of a cautionary bullish move right now. Now, let's start to understand what news is, what, what's making the news to make the market look the way that it is right now. Let's go out to our first story. On the first story, we start talking about what's going on in the market. In which you want me to use this one, Joey? Are we going to remember? Am I going to use that one or not use that one? Just for those seeking alpha ones. Oh, okay. So we'll go back to this one. All right. So. The U.S. unemployment rate fell to 11.1%. So it had risen. The unemployment rate had risen due to coronavirus. As the country started to go through reopening, unemployment rates rose. Well, the unemployment rate fell 
because more people were finding jobs. Jobs report doesn't reflect recent business closures in response to the coronavirus lay uh, uh, coronavirus in recent layoffs. So we're going to keep that in mind. I'm telling you, going into the third quarter is going to be a very important sign for earnings. All right, so if we scroll down, it says black workers face slower economic recovery. Well, again, that is in the news story. Black employment has historically been higher uh, than white un unemployment in the U.S. This gap is narrowing, was narrowing before the coronavirus pandemic, but with unemployment hitting record highs across the, the board, black Americans could be left even further behind. All right, let's take that into consideration. The jobless rate fell to 11.1% in June as the U.S. regained 4.8 million jobs. So no matter when, you, when you're looking at uh, who's making or who's or who's going back to work, a lot of people who were out of work, no matter what color you are, no, um, people were out of work because of the coronavirus. As we started to get more um, into reopening, a lot more people started going back to work. Job growth in June followed May's payroll gain of 2.7 million and showed people are getting back to work faster than anticipated. But we also know from the Fed that the recovery is going to be a little slower than anticipated, number one. And number two, we could possibly be going through another wave of coronavirus spikes, all right? So just keep all of that in mind. Let's go to my next story about the news, about the Fed. U.S. Treasury reaches loan agreements with five major airlines. That is huge. All right, so we know that the airlines have been hit, all right? And now the government is trying to do a bailout of them. If we scroll down, the, the, the five companies are American, Frontier, Spirit Airlines, Hawaiian Airlines, SkyWest will receive loans under coronavirus stimulus. Uh, there's a couple of people, customers that I know who are pilots, and they've told me the horror stories that are going on with um, the airlines. And you know something, when the coronavirus was at its peak, if you want to call it at its peak, a lot of planes were flying empty just to hold on to their spots across the across the globe to have their um, their planes land. So they were flying a lot of empty planes. But what I do look at on social media, a lot of these airlines are flying full planes right now with no social distancing and in masks. Some wear masks, some not wearing masks. So I, again, I'm not going to get into the. Um, the political side of it, but I'm just going to report the stories as they are. All right, so the U.S. Treasury Department has agreed to terms for loans to American airlines and for smaller airlines as a part of an aid program to help the industry weather the coronavirus pandemic. These airline companies, folks, are losing a ton of money without people flying or trying to get as many people into a plane to fly as little planes as possible as the country is reopening. Next one. Uh, the Fed debated options to provide more economic support. There's a lot of chatter out there that more stimulus is on the way. I just read another story prior to getting on here uh, that the president is looking into cutting payroll taxes uh, as a means to stimulate putting more money in your pocket. You would like that, wouldn't you, Joey? Mm -hmm. Joey's like, I would like that too. But a lot of money, uh, he talked about a lot of the things that were already done uh, a lot of uh, money was put into our, our, our accounts individually, directly from um, the Treasury or from the IRS directly to $1,200. And Joey, you made more than that because you got what? Three. Three kids. Three kids. So, um, you know, I think that it was a great way to stem the tide for a lot of people who were under the pressure of paying bills. All right, so our government is trying to back up what we need to get us going, and now the Fed is debating more options uh, to provide more economic support. And one more story, uh, the House passed a $1.5 trillion infrastructure bill. Demo the Democratic plan to rebuild roads and rails doesn't have Republican support, and bipartisan efforts have faltered for years. Listen. You know, if we talk about putting more money into the economy, well, you know, what's one of the best ways to get more people working? Infrastructure bills. So let them fight it out, whether they're on the right side or the left side. Let them fight it out. 
The House passed a broad $1.5 trillion bill effort to rebuild the nation's roads, railways, and schools as Democrats pursued their own infrastructure legislation without the bipartisan deal discussed for years during the Trump administration. This is one of the few sessions that's got a lot more politics than I'd like, but I'm going to concentrate on the stories themselves. These are the things that are going to help to buoy the economy, to make more money in the economy and help people out. So I'll just keep that in mind. All right. So those are the things that are moving within the market. All right. Moving within the market. Let's go now take a look at our indicators that we use for doing just this. We're going to go to actually let's go to our viewers tab from the viewers tab. Let's go to our watch list viewer and let's go find our watch list of stocks today. We'll scroll down. Today is seven two. Here's our stocks. Uh, from Trending Thursday today. All right, and the two stocks that I'm going to look at right away for the market, for those of you who are VectorVest subscribers, we're going to look at the VVC. And for those of you who are not VectorVest subscribers but still want a way to know what's going on in the market, I always look at the SPY, the spiders. All right, here they both are highlighted. I'm going to right click and I'm going to view the graphs of both of these. So both of these will track the market. One is looking at over 8,200 stocks, and one, the SPY, is looking at the move of 500 stocks. I always like to look at a three-month graph. All right, here's the market. Here's the vector vest composite, which tracks the move of over 8,200 uh, $8, stocks. What's it doing right now? Uh, from a podcast view, you can't see this, but I'm going to explain. The market right now, since about, let's go find a date, since about 6.11, all right? So we're coming up on a month's worth of time. The market is pretty much in a sideways move, all right? Number one. Number two, notice that coming up, I'm going to draw this line. I'm going to move this line. I can't do that. I'm going to draw a line where the market gapped down, all right, where the market gapped down on about, oh, what date is that? Market gap down or the vector vest composite gap down on 610 of 2020. All right. We still have not overcome fully fading the gap from the move down in the market on 610. All right. Look at what happened. That line where we gapped down was a value of about $47.42. It created a beautiful level of the gap. But look since then, look at the vector vest composite challenging that level of $47.42, not being able to break through it. So we've got a level of support sitting at $44.79 and a level of resistance at $47.42, and that's where we stand right now. We're currently still in a channel. We did recently break out of a wedge where we were coming off of uh, lower highs and higher lows created a level of um, consolidation. We just recently broke out of that level. So we still have more of a bullish feel right now. But if we're looking for a confirmation of an up more, uh, upward move, let me make this line a little darker. If we're looking for a more confirmation of an upward move, see this level right here sitting at $47.42. What happened today? The vector vest composite, the wick or the high of the day got right to that level of 47.42. Folks, I am looking for more confirmation before we say that the market is ready to take on the highs uh, that occurred back here on 6.8. All right, so the market is moving in the right direction. I have a moving average. It's above that moving average, moving higher, but I'm looking for that for confirmation. Let's go look at the S&P 500. Sort of kind of the same scenario. If I drew a line connecting the lows and connecting the highs, it also broke out of a wedge. I see another line of resistance sitting at about 315. And look at where today's candle is. Man, this stuff works. Tom, I know you're in the room. Badger, type it in the room. This is, this is ideally what you're looking for to confirm whether the market is really in an upward move right now or not. Level of resistance on the SPY sitting at 315.63. Look at today's candle. Look at the wick. 
kissing that level, not able to break through. Folks, if you're looking for the market to move higher, let's break out of the channel that we are in, whether you're on the SPY or the VVC. And folks, that's where we stand right now as to what's going on in the market. If you're playing the market right now, do it cautiously. Do it cautiously. The news is out there positive, but do it cautiously. All right, any questions, Joey? As I drink my Cafe Bustello in my, I just bought this from Walmart. Love this cup. This water, it, it's leak proof too. So I can't spill it all over Joey. How can all major markets be higher than the Vector Best Composite? The, ve the question is, how can all major markets be higher than the Vector Best Composite? So let me show you something. I'm going to put on all four graphs. This is something that you may know or not know that you can do. There's the S&P. I'm going to draw on the IWM for the Russell 2000. And then I'm actually going to throw on the level. Uh, what else am I looking for? The NASDAQ, the QQQQ. All right. And now you can look at all four major indices. And this is something that we never do, but I'd like to do. All right. Here's all the major indices. Here's the Russell 2000. Here's the Vector Vest. Well, the, the three major indices, the S&P, the Russell 2000, and the Qs. Let's zoom in on all of these. Looking at almost about a three-month view, you'll notice that a lot of the, uh, notice that they, they pretty much, ooh, they pretty much mimic each other. Take that off, take that off, zoom in, and on the Vector Vest Composite, we will zoom in. All right, um, here we stand. Look, they're all sort of kind of moving in the same direction. Now, the Vector Vest Composite tracks the move of 8,200 stocks. The Qs tracks the move of about 4,300 stocks, but it's very tech heavy. The IWMs tracks the move of 2,000 stocks, and the S&P 500 tracks the move of about 500 stocks. So when I'm looking at a lower number of stocks, it could look higher than the Vector Vest Composite, but when I look at the VVC, I'm looking at all of the stocks in the Spiders, all of the stocks in the Russell, all of the stocks in the NASDAQ, and then some to track it on the Vector Vest Composite. So it may not keep up with these as far as um, 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 dynamics, but we feel that it's a better representation because of the sheer number of stocks it tracks. Any other questions, Joey? Can you ask Glenn to explain why the MTI is still about 1.6 when the BSR fell from 11 to 3? And the RT is about 1.1. It seems it should be lower. All right. So when the question is, Joey is asking, I'm going to close out of this graph. When I'm looking at the home page, the question is, why is the MTI still as high as it is? So when I look at things like the MTI, um, the MTI is an ag it looks at all three indicators. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Um, the, the MTI looks at the price of the vector vest composite, the relative timing, and the buy-to-sell ratio. Now, why is it high? Because this is about a 50-day look-back period on all three indicators. These indicators can move on a day-over-day -day basis and change and show, ref and show a reflection of change. Whereas the MTI, if it's looking back over time, it's going to move a little slower. So yes, the buy-to-sell ratio, but look at this. The buy-to-sell ratio rose on a day-over-day -day basis. So the DMTI. RT rose on a day-over-day -day basis, so did the MTI. Price rose on a day-over-day -day basis, so is the MTI. Your question would probably come into place is if they fell on a day-over-day -day basis, why is the MTI rising on a day-over-day -day basis? And that's because it's got a longer look-back period than just day-over-day -day when looking at these indicators. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, any other questions? I'm yeah. going to take one more question before we move on. Okay, it says, how do you join the Jockey Club? Uh, the question is, how do you join the Jockey Club? One, you have to have a subscription to the Vector Vest software. Two, you have to have real time in the Derby. And once you have those two things, the Derby and real time, uh, if you go up to the Derby, I don't know if we have the Derby up, but if we don't, of, uh, of course, the day that you don't put it up, it's not there. But once you have the tab for the Derby, it will include a link in the Derby itself to click on for the Jockey Club. All right. Any more questions? I just said only one more. Yeah. But. So can we save four graph layouts? 
The question is, can you save four graph layouts? No, I can put them up, but I can't save them. And I can, you know, when I go up to my graphs, when I go to set up my graphs, where am I at? I can uh, hit this little button right here for all four, but I cannot save that as a layout to look at all four graphs. Answer to that is no. All right, any other questions? All right, folks, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you're liking so far what you see. Um, we finally got to a point where I've got more subscribers watching this YouTube than non-subscribers. It took us a while to get there, but that means you guys are then slowly but surely subscribing. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel, folks. All right, we'd love to have you. All right, what are you going to show me? Are you going to show my... It is. Oh, what do you see? Well, I'm not drinking out of it. I got stuff in it. Here's the mugs. Here's the mugs that we're offering on the store. All right. That's it's the Vector Vest mug. Huh? It's similar, I think. It's similar. It has a blue top. Oh, it's, it's a little different. All right. But this is the mug that you can get. Joey put a whole bunch of stuff in here. Joey did it. So that's why I can't drink out of it. All right. So, all right. With that being said, let me minimize the graph. Let's get to our next story. Do, do, do. Let me go find it. All right, next story. Let's talk about coronavirus. All right, let's get you over here. Let's talk about coronavirus. Still, that's the biggest news out there right now. Gilead prices COVID-19 drug Remdesivir at $2,340 per patient as develop, in developed nations. That's a lot of dough. That's a lot of dough for a, a vaccine. Uh, Gilead Sciences on Monday priced its COVID remdesivir at $23.40 per patient for wealthier nations and agreed to send nearly all of its supply of the drug to the United States over the next three months. That's a, that's kind of icky that they're sending all of their drug. You know, there's, we're not the only ones going through COVID-19, all right? Remdesivir is expected to be in high demand as one of the only treatments so far shown to alter the course of COVID-19 after the intravenously administered medicine helped shorten hospital recovery times in a clinical trial. It won emergency use and authorization in the United States and a full approval in Japan. Folks, we are getting closer and closer and closer to an actual vaccine. Gilead is one of the stocks that are at the forefront to get it done. But man, this story is kind of disparaging in that they're going to send all of it to the United States where there's other countries out there that need it. And that's a big price tag on it, too. That's a lot of money um, on a drug to help uh, from a vaccine, a, a vaccine for the drug. Well, again, I'm just reporting what I see. And this one, Centene, actually helps us here in Charlotte. Centene's expansion into Charlotte to top one billion dollars, thirty-two hundred jobs. So this is where Joey lives. Joey lives in this building right here. Is that the the Bank of America building? Yeah, I live you, at the top. You live at the top of the Bank of America building. You know something compared to New York. This is a cute, this is a cute little skyline. This is, this is a cute little fella right there. I'm a New Yorker, so I know what a real skyline is. Joey's been in Charlotte all his life probably, and he's loving this skyline, but that's a cute little fella, Joey. One day come to New York and we'll show you a real skyline. Anyway, um, an East Coast headquarters for Fortune 50. Fortune 50 company is officially Coming to Charlotte, Centene, which ranked number 42 on this year's Fortune 500 list, will add 3,200 new jobs here over a 10-year period. Man, so this is another company that's at the forefront of coming up with a vaccine. I wanted to put the story in because it does affect Charlotte directly. Now, one of the stocks that I talk a lot about in um, COVID-19 is Moderna. Someone sent me a story. Um, trading in COVID-19 bubble, 70% downside on Moderna. So interesting. There could be $6 billion, <clears throat> sorry, 6 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines searching for patients in 2021. That's a lot of doses of vaccine. Companies responsible for 4 billion doses have stated that this is a not-for-profit exercise. <clears throat> I'll laugh at that. It's unclear if Moderna can even supply markets 
and, con and, and consensus forecasts for 2020 slash 2022 appear unachievable. Hmm. The CEO has avoided answering questions regarding the supply chain, and that comes up as a clear red flag. So as much as I love COVID-19, these are stories that help me to make a better decision on whether COVID uh, on, on uh, Moderna helps me to make a better decision if it's a stock that I still want to continue to trade or does this news affect my ability to make money in it? The $17 billion increase in the market capitalization is ludicrous. Why is that? Everybody's trying to throw money behind trying to find a vaccine. We see 70% downside from current levels, near-term news flow, about 100-plus competing vaccines. Uh, you see that? 100-plus competing vaccines in development will likely pop this bubble. So we saw a story on Gilead um, getting out there and they got the Remdesivir, which is pretty much ready to go in the United States. It's already good to go in Japan. And then this story talks about six billion doses. What? Six billion doses, huh? I can have, one. oh, I didn't know, okay. Six billion doses <clears throat> in on the market of vaccine by 2021, 2022. Very interesting. All right. So those are my stories on coronavirus. Let's go out to, did I do this wrong again? No, I do it this way. All right, let's go back out to my watch list. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's talk about uh, what stocks did I put in here for Corona? I put in CNC. That's the one that's coming to you, uh, Charlotte. And then I'm also going to look at <clears throat> Gilead. Let's analyze them real quick. All right, so the stocks, Price, where's the value? There's the price. Price $67 on Centene, it's under its value. We give a value of 101.75. Value is what we feel the stock is currently worth, all right? We look at things like earnings per share, earnings growth rate, amongst other things, to put an intrinsic value on the stock. It is not a profit target. It is what we feel the stock is worth. You always wanna know is your stock is under overvalued. CNC is currently undervalued. I look at, um, not gold, which was my other, CNC, and did I put Moderna in here? I did not. Maybe it was just CNC. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put that in there. Yeah, CNC, <clears throat> GLD. Yeah, that was wrong. Who put GLD in there? You. You said Gilead. Oh, it's G-I-L-D. That's why. All right, I'm going to take GLD out. That was wrong. That was Joey's fault. Yep, it was Joey's fault. All right, so now let's go look at CNC and look at Gilead. And now let's continue. Uh, Gilead, currently undervalued. How about we've got two pharmaceutical stocks that are undervalued? That is not a normal thing. Most of these stocks that are um, pharmaceutical stocks tend to be overvalued because they just, they just are. But both of these stocks that I'm looking at, from a coronavirus standpoint, are both undervalued. Let's look at their upside potential. Centene's got a much better upside potential with relative value at 1.48. RV looks at a stock's ability um, to make money over the long term. It looks at the stock's ability, long-term upside potential as compared to AAA corporate bond. So CNC should outperform that AAA corporate bond by 48% over the next one to three years, whereas Gilead is pretty even. Yeah, um, the Gilead might outperform the AAA corporate bond or might not, all right? Centene, relative safety, indicator of risk. Relative safety on CNC is 1.4. Man, this is a company that keeps meeting or exceeding its earnings expectation quarter over quarter, year over year. Gilead, above one on relative safety at 1.05, but not nearly as strong as CNC. Relative timing tells me if the stock is in an uptrend or not. Above one, the stock's in an uptrend. The higher above one it is, the faster in an uptrend it is. Centene at 1.23. Keep in mind, all of these indicators are cast on a scale between zero and two, all right? So 1.23, Centene is in an uptrend, nicer uptrend than Gilead, which has an RT of 1.04. If I'm looking at these two companies from a coronavirus standpoint, I like Centene better. Stock is a buy. How about this? The stock grows its earnings at a clip of 16% a year, whereas Gilead grows its earnings at a negative percentage of negative 5% a year. Centene is the way to go. Well, so if I'm looking at these two stocks, let's go uh, take a look at their graphs. 
Let's go take a look at Centene first. Man, why does that open up so big like that? All right, let's put this on a three-month graph. Centene, a little bit of a pullback, a little bit of a sideways move, but look at this. I'm looking at a 20-day exponential moving average recently. After finding a level of support, uh, sitting at about, oh, let's go see. Found a level of support sitting at about $59.75. Look at that bounce off of support. Let me make that a little darker. Look at that bounce off support. Not only that, look at the stock's price go above that 20-day uh, exponential moving average and found another level of resistance, which it just got through, which was a value of 65.83. The stock's on the move. Earnings is rising still a little lower than it was three months ago, but look at the rise. Earnings is the engine that drives the stock's price higher. I like Centene. I like that the RT of the stock is now back above one. The stock's in an uptrend, moving higher above the 20-day. Nice open day. A little bit of hair at the top. I wonder if Jesse's in the room. A little bit of a wick at the top, which shows me a little bit of some selling pressure, but the body of the candle is still bigger than the wick. Stronger up day than the bearish pressure coming in. So that was on CNC, where was we look at GL, uh, GILD, Gilead, a lot of strong channelization going along. Is that a good word, channelization? You say it right, yeah. Okay, if I said it right. Uh, the stock's price is currently above the 20-day exponential moving average. RT is above one, but look at the pullback on earnings per share. Earnings is pulling back over the last three months, whereas with CNC, earnings is starting to rise. I'd rather have you in a stock that's moving higher with rising earnings. That's a better combination of a stock to look at. So if I'm looking at those two based on the stories, CNC I like more. But wait, there's more. We have a coronavirus watch list. Ta-da! I made it just for the trending Thursday. In here, we've got 44 stocks. I'm going to sort this by percentage price change. Let's go see what's moving up today. INO, a stock that we were in in the jockey club today. Uh, I was making money. Trib, AGTC. All right, so let's back up a little bit. These are the stocks that are moving up the most today. If I'm trying to find a longer term play on a coronavirus stock, Let's sort this by a relative value. Let's see what's at the top. VRTX, another stock that we made a lot of money in uh, in the jockey club. REGM, ALXM, ABBV. Where's Gilead? There's Gilead. Where's CNC? Is CNC not, on, in, not in here? Let me go check that out real quick. Maybe CNC. Why would CNC not be in here? CNC, 17. Is it not in here? Let's get to go up to 45. It was. It wasn't in there. Now it's in there. And now that's the beautiful thing about creating my own coronavirus watch list. I can continue to add to it. From a longer term perspective, it's number one, two, three, four, number five on the list out of 45 coronavirus stocks. That's not bad. Gilead is in the list in the top 15 or so. But CNC, where's my Moderna? Maybe Moderna might not, Moderna might not be as beautiful a play anymore. So now maybe I start to look at a stock like CNC as a better play. What else is here? Notice that the majority of the stocks that are at the top of the list sorted by relative value are stocks that are under their values. That's a good thing. Look at their relative values. Look at their relative safeties. Look at their relative timings. And all of these companies grow their earnings at a clip of double digits. So I love this watch list of stocks. If you are a VectorVest subscriber, we do have this watch list of stocks in here for you, and you can do the same analysis. I think that the first stock that finds, or the first company that finds a vaccine is gonna take off to the moon, but it's gonna drive the rest of the industry higher as well. All right, any questions? No questions? All right. Again, don't forget to comment, like, and, sub uh, and subscribe. Folks, we need you to subscribe, especially if you like this. And you know something? Make a comment as well. Make a comment after these videos out. I want to hear what you got to say. I respond to a lot of them on my own. All right? So I'd love to hear from you. If you like the analysis, you don't like the analysis, or whatever it is, and even if you're on a podcast, uh, you can always go to YouTube, find the live video or recorded video, and comment as well. I do relish your comments, so please don't hold back. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like, and let me know what you would like to see. All right? That's another thing, but big thing on top of that is to subscribe to the channel. All right. Um. USA yep. kick your ass.
says, who designed your app? Who designed uh, our product? Our product development team um, made our app. Yeah, it's a whole, whole team. Uh, it is our whole development team put it together. All right, and we do have an app. For those of you who don't know, we do have an app that's on either an iPhone or uh, a Droid that you can use a lot of the functionality that I'm showing you in here on your mobile device. All right, on your mobile device. That was a good question. How do I get trending Thursday stock? How do you get the trending Thursday stock list? You know, do we, is that something we should start putting out on a weekly basis? Because that's something that you can do. That's a Joey question. I can't send it out. You can't send out the whole list? To where? On YouTube, like take a screenshot of it or something? Well, Joey. Below the video. Oh, the stocks that we're in? Oh. Yeah, it's on that. All right, they are below the video. In, when, the description. in the description. You notice how I put all of those lines in there, you know, what's going on in the market. I put two stocks at the end of it. Yeah, it's below the video. All of the stocks that I talk about in Trending Thursday are in the description of the day. In the description of the day. All right. Thank you. Good good call, Joe. How to set up alerts. How to set up alerts. We don't talk about that in here. That's you want you need to have the software number one to do that. And number two, give our product support staff a call. We won't cover that in trending Thursdays, but you can set up alerts. And if you are a subscriber, give our subscri uh, call, give our uh, product support team a call. Can you use the app on iPad? Yes, I got an iPad right here. As a matter of fact, I got two iPads. So on my iPad, on my iPhone, my other iPad is on the, on the floor. Kindle? A Kindle, no. I don't think you can use it on a Kindle. I don't think it's got an operating system. I don't even think it's got a droid operating system. I'm going to I'm going to venture out and say no, but I'll look into it. I think no on a Kindle. I think no on a Kindle, but I will check that out for you. Any other questions, Joey? All right. Let's go to our next story. Well, before we do that, let's go back to our watch list, 72. And now, let's move over to our next story. Do, do, do. Oil. Woo-wee. There's some big news right here. I got to put that. Ooh-wee. You know what happened to Chesapeake? <laughs> That's it, because it claimed bankruptcy. Chesapeake Energy officially files for bankruptcy. It's now got a new ticker symbol um, because it's in bankruptcy. Long rumored to be seeking a file for bankruptcy. Formally commenced a processing after filing Chapter 11 protection in the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the Southern District of Texas. The energy company entered a restructuring support agreement with all of its lenders under its revolving credit facility. Holders of approximately 87% of the obligations under its term loan agreement, approximately 60% of its senior secured second lien, uh, lien notes due 2025 and approximately 20% of its senior unsecured notes in efforts to reorganize to eliminate $7 billion in debt. That's a lot of dough. So why is this important? Because I've been talking about the oil industry for the, for the, for the longest time in this room, saying that um, oil has been running. I told you that it was more of an aggressive play on, on, on oil. Uh, I've got one of my colleagues here that tells me a whole different story in regards, no, it's not speculative play, go buy it. I'd rather have you in the mode of, getting to know that before oil starts to really move, you need demand. So he said, well, by the time demand gets here, it'll be too late. No, it won't be too late. Oil, oil is not ever going anywhere, all right? no time soon. So I'd rather have you in oil at the right time than to have you sit in oil and it doesn't do anything, all right? I'd rather have you in a stock that's moving or in an industry that's moving than to not. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let me get back into uh, the software and let's go back to, where am I at? Let's go back to my list. The stock that I was paying attention to is Chesapeake Energy. Uh, what, did I do something wrong? I did. All right, Chesapeake Energy. All right, in here, the stock is trading at $4.30. The value is $19, but remember, the stock is in reorganization right now. Stock's in reorganization right now. So before I even look at trying to analyze it, let's just go take a look at the stock. All right, view the stock graph. Let's maximize that. It's in Chapter 11. Even through all of the time when oil was rocking and rolling, put this on a three-month ba three basis, even all of that, uh, 
overall it was moving down. It used to be CHK, now it's CHKAQ because it is in bankruptcy. It did have a spike up and then boom, the stocks. I think that might have been close to the time when the stock, let's go to splits, yeah. I think that was close to the time where it did claim for bankruptcy or very close to it. It claimed it's now currently sitting below the 20 day exponential moving average. Earnings is falling. That's just one stock within that industry, all right? That was the, what the story was on. I'm gonna close that out in a second. All right, that's just what the story was on. Uh, wow, who did that? Wow, somebody just gave us. That's his name. USA Kick Your Ass just gave us a hundred dollars. That's the first time that we've ever had that happen here. We've got some money, but nothing ever like that. Wow, that's I gotta I gotta shout you out for that. Thank you so much for that. We just wow, dude. I've never. I don't know how to respond except for thank you. Um, I've never had anybody give us money for. I just love doing this stuff. But I'm thank you so much. Thumbs up. And um, man, I hope you are now a subscriber to the channel. I hope that you are. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you for that, Joey. All right. Um, let's go from here. This is just one stock in that industry. Right. Let's go over. Uh, we looked at it. I've got a watch list of stocks. Um, all right, listen, Joey, get his information if you can. Talk to him, and we can see what we can do. That's all I can say. Uh, we can see what, you, what we can do. Let's move up. I've got petroleum stocks. All right, boom. There it is. How many petroleum stocks am I looking at? I'm looking at 64 stocks. What I've done is I've gone through the industries, the petroleum industries. I went through all of the petroleum industries. I took all of those stocks, put them into one watch list. From there, I took out all of the stocks that were less than a dollar, and I took out all of the stocks that had an average volume less than 100,000 shares. So these are decent oil stocks, all right? So we've got 64 of them. Now, I'm gonna sort this by relative value, Let's see which stocks out of the 64 have an upside potential. We got a few of them. The biggest one is Oasis Midstream, which is an $8.43 stock. Look at all of these stocks that have good upsides. Look at their safeties, below one. Many of their RTs are below one as well. Um, so let's just keep that, I, I'm, I'm liking that. Let's go see which ones are moving up the fastest. All right, looking at that as well, du, 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 du. Magnolia Oil and Gas at an RT at 1.60, Geopark at 1.59, and so on. So are there some oil stocks that you can take a look at? The answer to that is yes. Now, this is the main thing. Out of the 64 stocks that I have in this watch list, let's go down to the watch list average. I'm going to right click on the watch list average and let's view all 64 stocks in a graph. This is the telling story, folks. What's going on with oil? Put this on a three month graph. And for anybody who's telling me, yeah, you know, I'm making a ton of money oil and all that, let me tell you what's going on. You see this movement up in oil? When was that coming from? Remember when the March, April, um, uh, options or contracts expired and oil was at historically low because of the uh, contracts. What was this? This was people saying, man, oil is so low. It's at the lowest point I've ever seen it. People were jumping all over it. What did I tell you even during that time? There was no demand behind the oil. What's going on with oil over the most recent time? Back below the 20 day exponential moving average. RT, has been trending lower, now below the value of one. Earnings per share, trending lower. Earnings is the engine that drives a stock higher, or in this case, the whole watch list higher. All I'm saying is if you're gonna wait to get into oil, back here when it was at historically low lows, you could have more aggressively gotten in. So, no demand, no demand, no demand. Now you're sitting there going, oh man, you made some money, but now you're waiting. I would rather you get in when uh, the stock's prices or the, the industry's prices above the value of one, RT is rising, and earnings is rising. That's what I'd like to see. 
That's what I'd like to see. That would be the ideal situation. I am still not bullish on oil. This was people who were taking advantage of blood in the street on oil. If you're more aggressive that way, could you have done it? You sure can. I'm not saying it's the right time to buy now still. All right, any questions, Joey? What do you use RT times CI for? The question is, what do you use as a sort RT times CI? RT times CI, RT, which looks at the stock's short-term price trend, CI, looks at a stock's ability to withstand long and lengthy price declines. So I'm looking for stocks that go up and have the tendency and the resiliency to keep going up. That's what the combination of RT times CI is for. It's more in line with a more aggressive view on trying to trade. High relative timing stocks that have the ability to withstand long and lengthy price declines. All right, so that's what I would use RT times CI. All right. Well, what's your uh, Twitter handle? What's my Twitter handle? At Glenn Tompkins Jr. That's it. At Glenn Tompkins Jr. Glenn with two N's. Glenn with two N's. At Glenn Tompkins Jr. Uh, if you do follow me on Twitter, VectorVest also follows me on Twitter. So VectorVest many times will retweet my tweets. All right, but if you want to join my, and I, I try to put a lot of stuff up there that keeps, I, it's my Twitter, but I use it specifically for VectorVest. It's my Twitter, but I specifically use it for VectorVest. All right, so there you go. I'd love to see more of you guys join me on my Twitter or, you know, um, that'd be great. All right, so Steven says he's Twittered out. <laughs> Is he, are you Twittered out? Are you even on Twitter, Joey? Joey's not in the main world. I think Joey's partly in the world and partly not in the world. How do you not have Twitter? I have a Twitter account, Glenn. You do have a Twitter account? Yeah. Uh, what's your Twitter address? <laughs> I'm only messaging with you. At Glenn Tompkins. At Glenn Jr. Tompkins Jr. <laughs> All right. So with that being said, let's get back to our watch list for today. Joey, we're we're actually pretty good today, yeah? Yeah. Time wise? All right, do you want me to do the last one? All right, cool deal. Um, let's talk about gold. Let's talk about gold, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about gold. All right, Nova Gold reports drilling resumes at Donlin Project. Ooh, so keep that in mind. All right, so gold is, you know, this is, this is another dichotomy of sorts. Gold should be rocking and rolling as the coronavirus has hit us, but why is it not going? Normally, gold goes up when the dollar gets weak. Why is the dollar not getting weak? Because the Fed is throwing so much money behind the market. The, do, the, the Fed is trying to make sure that the dollar stays strong. If our dollar stays strong, people are going to have to still pay more money for our products, right? So um, just trying to keep that in mind. Don't forget to look at the stocks moving. Uh, you got to take that away because I'm going to pay attention. Joey takes my chat away to keep me online uh, because if not, I spend a lot of time checking the chat. So that's why Joey checks my chat for me because he's awesome like that. Right, Joey? Mm -hmm. All right. So Nova Gold reports drilling resumes in Donlin Project. Don, uh, Nova Gold and Barrick have reopened drilling program at Donlin Project. That's in Alaska following a two-month hiatus due to COVID-19. So maybe these companies start producing a little bit more gold, finding some more gold, uh, help to drive gold prices up. Uh, it's the latest quarterly report. Nova Gold said four drill rigs are turning at Donnelly and that most of the planned program aimed at confirming recent geological modeling concepts and testing potential extensions of high-grade zones will be completed by year end. This could be um, a catalyst, excuse me, to start pushing gold higher. Let's go take a look at it on a graph. Go back into the software. How do I do this, Joey? I don't know how I don't know how to do this. How long have we been doing this? Long enough that you should know how to do that. Wow, thank you, Joey. Let's go look at Nova Gold. Now, interesting. Look at Nova Gold trading at $9.33 with a value of $0.90. Cents. This is way over its value. It doesn't make it a bad stock. It just means that people are willing to pay a premium to own Nova Gold right now. That's a lot. 
compared to what it's worth. Upside potential and relative value is at 0.08. Right now, Nova Gold's got no upside potential. Safety at 0.80. It is not a safe stock. Relative timing at 0.99. Still below the value of one, so still unfavorable. Nova Gold in that story is not a good play right now. It is a sell recommendation with an earnings growth rate of negative 7%. Man, it's tough to, for a company to be attractive if they're growing their earnings at a negative clip, right? Let's go take a look at Nova Gold. We'll right-click on it. We'll view the stock graph. Let's take a look. Put it on a three-month graph. Whew! Oil's getting beep, beep, beep. Found a level of support. Uh, Nova Gold found a level of support sitting at $7.92. Bounced off that level. Now went above the... 20-day uh, exponential moving average, moving higher today. Now, no, notice with today's activity, uh, it is an open green candle, but with a big wick at the top, and the wick is bigger than the body. There's a lot more bearish pressure on the stock with today's activity. It is up from the prior day. It looks like it did gap up. It is up higher from the previous day, but a lot of selling pressure. And yesterday had a lot of selling pressure as well. So just be careful with Nova Gold. Uh, as a whole, RT is sitting right at 0.99, not above one. Now, that's Nova Gold. I've got another watch list for you. Let's go to, where is it at? Do I, don't I have gold stocks? Oh, man, do I not have gold stocks? You should have one NG. Huh? You have one NG. No, 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 no. I'm talking about watch list. Do I not have a gold watch list? It's right there. Where? How did I miss that over and over? See from here. Wow. All right. Here's my gold stocks. I do have a watch list of gold stocks. I hate you, Joey. I have 49 stocks in here. Here's some of the biggest gold stocks in here. If I'm looking, and these are sorted by our master indicator VST, the best combination of value, safety, and timing. I want to see one that's got relative value, relative safety, and relative timing all above one. First one I see is your mono gold. AUY. Price is at 540, value at 613, so it's clearly undervalued. Good upside potential at 1.50 on RV. Relative safety is okay, it's favorable. It's at 1.07, and relative timing at 1.70. The stock is in an uptrend, a buy recommendation, earnings growth rate at 32%. So let's take a look at all of them. All right, here's our watch list average again at the bottom. We're looking at 49 stocks. I'm going to right click, view the average watch list. Let's go take a look. What's gold doing? Look at that there. Put that on the three month graph. Gold is in a little bit of a channel within a channel. All right, it is above the 20 day exponential moving average. I do like that. <clears throat> it crossed above it on 622. It also broke through a level of resistance. This is the whole watch list of 49 stocks. Broke above a level of resistance at 29.58. And <clears throat> trying to get to the most recent three month high, which occurred on 520. Uh, the high price was 27.06. This portfolio or watch list of stocks is trading at 26.11. Gold is on the run. RT tells me that gold is in an uptrend. I love the earnings on this watch list. Growing, growing, growing. Gold may not be a bad play. It's just had a hard time getting out of its own way. Could it be starting to do so now? Possibly. Again, I love that it broke through a level of support, uh, bounced off a level of support, went above the 20-day exponential moving average, and just recently, yesterday, broke through a level of current resistance at 25.58. Gold may be a good play. Uh, just be patient with it. That's all I got to say. Gold may be a good play. Just be patient with it, but it is on the rise. Any questions, Joey? <clears throat> Let's see. Would be nice to see them separated by senior and junior minors as they move separately. Um, I can separate them by minors. Uh, that takes some little work on my side, but I can probably make that happen. That's something that I will consider doing for you. I'll probably I'll try to see what I can do to make that happen. How do I find a list of all gold stocks? How do you find a vector How do you find a list of all gold stocks in this in the software? All right. So in the viewers tab. Let's go down to Industry Viewer. Industry Viewer.
And now I'm going to sort all of my 221 industries, right here, see 221 industries, sort them by industry. So I'm going to sort them alphabetically, right? What am I looking for? I'm looking for mining. So let's go down. Let's go find mining, mining. Here's all my mining stocks, mining uranium, mining other, mining gold, silver. And what I've done is to make my watch list is I ran all of these industries, right click, view the stocks in that industry group. It'll bring me up a listing of stocks. I took all of these stocks and put them into one watch list. Now, what you'll notice, if I sort by price, there's a lot of stocks in here that have a price less than a dollar. I took all of those stocks out. See all of these dollars, less than a dollar stocks? I took all of those stocks out, number one, and then I took all of the stocks out that had an average volume of less than 100,000 shares. So I went through all three industries. I put all of the stocks from all of their, all three industries into one watch list. Hopefully that answers your question. But that's how you can do it in the VectorVest software. Any other questions, Joey? Yeah, I think I had something else. Go ahead. What does the hammer mean? The hammer, when you say the hammer, the hammer is um, a chart pattern. Ah, let's go see if I can find any hammers on here. It is a reversal pattern coming off of stocks uh, after a stock has hit a low. Uh, let's go see. No hammer. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. There's not a hammer. There it is. There it is. There's a hammer. All right. Stock price pulling back. That's a hammer. Ah, it's not a full-blown hammer. The wick of the body, the lower wick has got to be two times the body, but it normally tends to show a possible reversal. All right? You could say that that's a hammer. A hammer is normally found at the bottom of a pattern. All right? So it is a, uh, a technical way of looking at a possible. There it is. This is more of a hammer. See the price of the uh, stock fall? I still need the wick to be a little longer, but that's what a hammer looks like. And normally after that, it is a, it tends to be a, a, a form of reversal. See if I can find one more. Find one more. Uh, ah, that's not quite a hammer. That's a hammer, but that's a bullish. But that's still a hammer right there as the stock's price trended lower, pulled down. Look at that reversal. So that's what a hammer is, a technical candle formation. Any other questions, Joey? Should I buy a gold mining company or an ETF that tracks the price of gold? Question, uh, should I buy a gold mining company or an ETF that tracks the price of gold? If you're looking to put and take advantage of the industry without exposing yourself to a ton of risk, I would think about an ETF because it tracks a bunch of stocks or industry in one ticker symbol or that ETF. But, you know, if, if I'm looking at individual stock, an individual stock will have a tendency to move higher faster. All right, an ETF tracks a group or an indice, whereas an individual stock moves on its own. It all depends on what you're trying to do. If you want to take advantage of the industry without having a ton of risk, I would say use the ETF. If you believe the industry is going to move, cherry pick a stock, you're going to have a better chance on making a bigger bang in your buck shorter. Uh, any other questions? No, sir. All right. We're moving right along. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, folks. Again, I'm going to keep pushing that. I'm going to keep pushing that, especially for people who are brand new out there. We need your support. Support us. If you like what you see here, support us by subscribing to the channel. And don't forget, folks, after Joey puts this video up, especially for those people who will be listening on the podcast, I'd love to hear from you. Please comment, and I will respond. All right? Next story. The next story is on stocks of interest. I've got a few stocks of interest that caught my attention this week. Raytheon wins a $2.27 billion Pentagon traffic for Saudi Arabia. Um, has drawn a, a contract to supply Saudi Arabia under the foreign military sales program. So that's in your defense stocks along with Boeing, along with Lockheed and things like, uh, like that. Raytheon in that space. A uh, nice big contract they got. 
What else caught my attention? Microsoft. You know why I like this story? It's because I'm an Apple guy. Microsoft was going after Apple to go have, you know, Apple's got their Apple stores, which are amazing. Microsoft says, yeah, we're going to come up with our stores too. Microsoft is permanently closing its retail stores. So I, I am more towards Apple than I am Microsoft anyway. So Microsoft on Friday announced it will permanently close. It's got 83 Microsoft st uh, stores they're going to close them. In the past decade or so, Microsoft began to expand all its retail presence in an effort to create a shopping experience similar to Apple's. They weren't able to keep up. This guy's going to talk about it. I don't care about him talking about it, but that's the story. And then if you want fruit, go to look at this video so you can see the fruit. All right. So Microsoft, I'm going to see how that is affecting your stocks. We're going to take a look at it. What else caught my attention? So, ah, the 737 MAX to begin today, certification test. Boeing has been saying, come on, air people, let's get us back up in the air. Certification test flights for 737 MAX to begin today. And that was on June 29th, the story was done. And, you know, um, the FAA over that weekend confirmed to Congress that an agency board had finished a review of Boeing's safety system assessment for the plane, which would allow the flight certification testing to begin. So Boeing's trying to get back in the game, folks. It's been about a year. You can say about a year. Joey doesn't know, even though Joey's not paying attention to me. He's on his phone. Everybody yell at Joey for being on his phone right now. Ooh. All right, hold on. I got to put that in there. Ooh. All right, that's for Joey being in there. Joey, if you stay on the phone for too long, <coughs> that's what's finna happen. I just want you to know that. All right, this is big for Boeing. All right, um, being grounded has definitely affected Boeing in an adverse way. Let's go see what happens. All right, that's big news for Boeing. This is another big thing. Facebook ad boycott campaign set to go global. A lot of people have done this stop the hate for profit. A lot of people have been pulling out uh, Facebook ads. Since the campaign launched on June 17, more than 160 companies, including Ben & Jerry's, Coca-Cola, Hershey's, Honda, Levi Strauss, Starbucks, North Face, Unilever, Verizon, have pledged to stop buying Facebook ads for the month of July, and some have gone even further. That's big for Facebook. Now, Again, this was the first week where I had more political stuff in my stories than I wanted to have, but it is what's out there, all right? It is what's out there. All I really want to know is how it's affecting Facebook as a whole, all right? Another big story, Amazon. Amazon bought a company called Zooks, all right? It bought a company called Zooks because Amazon said it agreed to pick them up in a move that puts it more squarely in Silicon Valley's safe driving vehicle, self-driving vehicle. So we're getting closer and closer to the autonomous car and Amazon is getting into play by buying out a company called Zooks. Now I went to look for the stock. I couldn't find the stock. So I guess as Amazon bought it up, it's going to be part of the umbrella of Amazon. Let's go see how that can affect the stock. And last but not least, Tesla. Big news on Tesla's. It sure it soared after reporting a big beat on the second quarter deliveries. And that was a story that came out today. I saw that um, Tesla now has overtaken Toyota as the number one car manufacturer. Interesting. And notice that Tesla only puts out electric cars, right? But Tesla shares soared after the automaker said it delivered about 90,000 vehicles in the second quarter. That doesn't sound like a lot of cars, does it? That sure doesn't sound like a lot of cars. But um, from the uh, advantage of being all electric cars, uh, it's probably big. They hand, that handily beating Wall Street expectation as the electric car maker sales withstood the economic downturn better than most competitors. Wow. So that's big news in regards to Tesla as well. So let's take a look at those stocks. These were stocks that caught my attention. Every week I talk about these kinds of stocks that kept my attention that make the news. So let's look at Tesla. Notice that Tesla is the number one stock in this watch list sorted by VST, followed by Facebook and then Amazon. Let's go highlight these. Amazon, Microsoft, Boeing, uh, and Raytheon. One, two, three, four, five, six stocks that made my stocks of interest this week. Let's um, let's go analyze them. 
Tesla is way over its value and has been since it came into fruition within the VectorVest software, trading at $1,200 with a value of $230. Upside potential, really not there on Tesla, but it's a company that keeps making, uh, meeting or, or exceeding its earnings expectation and is moving as fast as it can in the database. Facebook, currently undervalued, good upside potential, good safety, good relative timing. Uh, Amazon, $2,900 to a value of 854. The stock is clearly overvalued. The upside potential on Amazon is not there, but it is a safe stock at 1.33 on relative safety, and the stock's in an uptrend at 1.72. Microsoft, clearly overvalued, trading at 207 with a value of 137. So people are willing to pay a premium to own Microsoft, but its upside potential or RV is above one at 1.14. The stock's in an uptrend. Relative safety at 1.35. Stock continues to meet or exceed earnings expectation. RT at 1.52. The stock is in an uptrend and it is a buy recommendation. Boeing, um, we're going to call Boeing fairly valued, trading at 181 with a value of 188. We're going to call that fairly valued. Upside potential, not there, at 0.81. Why? Because it got affected by uh, the COVID-19, uh, sorry, by being grounded. So a lot of its fundamental indicators like relative value and relative safety have taken a hit. But with the news, the stock is currently back in an uptrend right now. That is huge that they're going through testing on the 737 again. And Raytheon, who just got that new contract, uh, trading at 62, where a value of 67, I'm going to call that fairly valued as well. Upside potential at 0 0.95 on relative value, not there. Upside potential is not there yet. Relative safety at 0 0.82, not altogether a safe stock. And relative timing at 0 0.46, stock's not in an uptrend yet. So this is strictly a news-driven stock, all right? Strictly a news-driven stock that really hasn't started moving yet. Let's highlight, they're all highlighted. <clears throat> Let's view the stock graph. Let's go take a look at them. Look at Tesla. Look at Tesla. Look at that Tesla go. Love the earnings. Stocks RT is above is above one. Stock over the last three months has stayed above that 20-day exponential moving average. Even when it moves sideways, it still maintained itself above the 20-day moving average. Stock gapped up today. I currently have a closed green candle, which means that the stock is giving back a little bit on the day. But if you were in Tesla from yesterday, the stock definitely gapped up. You made a lot of money today. All right, let's go to the next stock, which is Facebook. Man, look at the big down um, bar today. I think that the boycott of uh, what's going on in Facebook is got it's got some it's going to probably grow some legs um, and we'll see what happens but a big down day today still currently above the 20 day exponential moving average um, <clears throat> relative timing took a little bit of dip today and earnings per share is pretty much flattening out still good earnings per share but this is news that definitely could affect our, uh, Facebook in a bad way. After it just bounced off a level of support, sitting at 207.89, went above the 20-day uh, exponential moving average, and now with the news affecting the stock adversely. Uh, right now, you take a wait-and-see approach on Facebook. All right, the next stock is Amazon, uh, trying to get into the autonomous car this is another graph that over the last three months looks good. It's steadily remained above that 20-day exponential moving average. Earnings is definitely higher than it was three months ago. Relative timing above one. Everything looks good about Amazon. Overall, everything looks good about Amazon. I do have a closed green candle today telling me that Amazon is giving back a little bit of what it made today. Let's go to the next one, Microsoft. Even though it's closing its stores, look at that graph today. Look at that candle. Candle looks good. Microsoft is a staple company. All right, even though it may be closing its doors on its stores, look at that equity curve. Microsoft is still a solid company. Earnings per share rising, <clears throat> RT above one, pulling back a little bit, pulling back a little bit, but overall, uh, Microsoft is a solid company, folks. Nice green open candle today. Next one, Boeing. Even with the news of uh, uh, getting back up in the air slowly but surely, the stock's still sitting in a little bit of a sideways pattern. 
clearly above the 20-day exponential moving average. Earnings is getting affected, and it will stay that way until it catches up and starts moving back up. But it's been a big roller coaster ride for Boeing, as you can see over the last three months. <clears throat> RT is still above one, pulling back a little bit. Just be careful with Boeing. Remember, it is news-driven. Uh, let the stock come to you, though. Don't, don't force the trade just because of the news. All right, next stock is, in the last stock, RTX. Just because <clears throat> they got their contract, just because they got their contract doesn't mean it's the right time to buy. Look at their earnings per share over the last three months moving lower. RT is still below the value of one. And the stock is not currently above its 20-day exponential moving average. But I do see something here. I'm going to draw a freehand line connecting the highs. All right. I'm waiting for the stock to break above that trend line that I just drew. So on a three-month graph, I just drew a trend line looking at the most recent high. I really would like to see the stock, and, and it should happen together. The stock should break above its trend line and cross above the 20-day exponential moving average at the same time. Um, the news could be the force that drives it higher, but if you want more confirmation, let the stock come to you. All right, that's it. I'm not going to do the other one, Joey. I'm going to leave it alone. Yeah. All right, so any questions on my stocks of interest today, Joey? What does Vectorized Software offer in investment? What does the Vector software offer? What does VectorVest offer investment club subscriptions? Does VectorVest offer investment club subscriptions? Answer to, to no. We do have user groups all over the country. You don't have to pay for those. If there's a user group in your area, uh, you can always go to, the, to that uh, user group on the day that it meets up and introduce yourself and say, Hi, I'm a VectorVest subscriber. I want to learn more about what you guys know. So you can always do that. That's the closest thing that I have to an investment club. Any other questions, Joey? <clears throat> um, Kev says you sound tired. I am a little tired, just a little bit. That's all right, <clears throat> but I'm still here. They said Joey is the brains. Thanks, Joey. Who's he? didn't say that. Kev didn't say that. No, Mike Morris said that. He said that Joey is the brains? Mm -hmm. Mike, I'm to take a bow. And who to take a bow? For yeah. Joey to take a bow? Take a bow. Yeah, yeah, all right. So, Mike, I don't even know you, but I'm finna put you in timeout. How about that? Well, he's right. No, he's, he's not. He's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm mad because he, he ain't right. right. He ain't right. He ain't right. He ain't right. He ain't right. All right. So, guess what, folks? <laughs> Let's go take a look at your stocks. How can we find out if there's a user oh. group in my area? All right, good question. So, don't don't put stocks in yet. If you want to find out if there's a user group in your area, go to the Views tab. Uh, yeah, let's go to the Views tab. <clears throat> go to the Friday's Views. Let's go to a fr any Friday's Views. Let's go to the most recent Friday's Views, okay? Friday the 26th of June. Notice I can go down, click on All, and go to User Groups. Ta-da! From the User Groups, I can go and see what User Groups. We got these all over the world, folks. Uh, the United Kingdom. Texas is another world in and of itself. We got them in, what did I just see, the Netherlands. We got them all over the world, all over the world. So I live in North Carolina. Let's go find North Carolina, uh, North Carolina, Charlotte. Oh, who's the user group leader in North Carolina, Joey? Probably some guy they found. Some guy they found? No, it's Glenn Tompkins. Oh, it? I run the user group leader. I run the user group in North Carolina. What is that? Uh, I ain't had one in a minute because we got the Rona. Oh, that's right. That's right. So I'm not, I haven't held one. Uh, since we had coronavirus. All right, let's charge. All right, you re now you ready to charge? All right, here we go. Let's see your stocks, folks. Start typing them in the room. Joey will tell me all uh, the stocks that he wants me to type in. You got to be nice to Joey. Business. Only one stock per person, folks. One stock. If you put more than one, Joey won't look at your submission. One stock per person. All right, Joey. Uh, Leonardo had to leave early, so we're going to look at CHTR for him. CHTR, okay. And uh, -K -K. See, I did it right. C H T R. Okay. A R, -A -R K K. Okay. Somebody wanted me to look at something. I forgot who it was. Dang it. Oh, I forgot. All right, keep going. It was A R K K a stock? I don't remember. Yeah, it's in there. Okay. And uh, J C. Okay. Johnson J C I. It just says JC I need, this morning. Did you guys do something this morning? Uh, the Jockey Club. Oh, okay. All right, stop giving me letters unless you know what's going on. <laughs> well, what do you want me? I don't know what these letters mean. NKLA. NKLA. That is one. Is this some VectorVest acronym I don't know? Maybe. 
CMBM. C M B M. Okay. F U V. F U V. A P P S. A P P S. T D O Y U. D O Y U. Okay. N V A X. N V A X. That's a coronavirus stock. A M D. Yeah. Man, there's a bunch today. <laughs> There's a lot today, Glenn. All right. I'm looking to you. All right. S-W-C-H. S-W-C-H. I want you to get new people specifically. I try. I try. Okay. But then they say that I skip over them, and I don't like them. <laughs> T-I-G-R. Say it again. T-I-G-R. Wow. I'm glad you get some flack sometimes. I, I get it from you and them. Oh, okay. J-Nug. J-Nug. T-D. T-D. Uh, square. SQ. T. AT&T. Um, CM. No, wait before you did those. Hang on. AXU. Hey, gold stock. LUV. LUV. Uh, Align. Uh, uh, is that Southwestern Airline? <coughs> okay. Some of these guys are... Type it in two. Okay, Joey's gonna dis. It's gonna. He's gonna disregard you if you type in two stocks. C R W D. C R W D. T E R. T E R. Teradyne. A K A M. A K A A K A M I. You can stop anytime you want, Joey. You're gonna make me look at a lot of stocks. S B S W. S what? S B S W. S W. Okay. Glenn is the eye candy. Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> wow. S E D G. S E D. In case you didn't notice, I just blushed. I just blushed a little bit. S E D G. And I, the last one. I just blushed. I want you to look. Look right here. You can see I blushed. Okay. Keep going, Joey. <laughs> uh, last one was. Z B R A. Zebra. Z B R A. All right. There you go. If it's, I skipped you, I'm sorry. I'm Joey's sorry. putting out out there that he steady apologizes. All right. Let's go look at a three month graph. So, for any of you who are new in the room, why do I look at a three month graph? Because what happens every three months on the stock? Earnings. All right. So, when I look at earnings, you know, I want to make sure if I put earnings on, that earnings is somewhere in the picture on the graph because that's the biggest mover of a stock's price, right? All right. So, that's why I like looking at a one quarter, uh, one quarter look back period. Charter, a little bit of a channel right now. Currently went below the 20 day exponential moving average, went back up, and with today's activity, is skirting back with the 20 day exponential moving average. RT is falling, but still above the value of one. The stock is losing momentum. Look at that from the high, connecting the highs. The stock is definitely trending lower from the high. But the RT is still above the value of one. All I'm saying with uh, Charter, be careful with it. Uh, I'd like, if I'm not in it yet, excuse me, let's see if the stock can break above that trend line first. All right? But if I'm in it, uh, I think I would have liked to have gotten out of it when the stock's price went below the 20-day exponential moving average. All right? Um, I do like the earnings per share, though. It does give me a good longer-term feel by, re, uh, by earnings per share, I do like it from that perspective, but I'd wait for a buying opportunity if I'm not in it yet. All right, next one. AKARKK looks good. That looks good. That's a technology sector ETF. A -R -K I like that. You know something, Joey? I like that stock, and I cannot lie. ARKK is, is, is moving up high. All right, you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to give it ooey and Dan for this one as well. I'm going to... That's a, oops, that's the cash register. I like that. Now, today, a closed green candle. I wouldn't buy it today, but you know something? This is not a parabolic stock. It's clearly nicely above the 20-day exponential moving average. I could use that as a way of getting out of the stock um, in relative time. I like everything about this stock. I really, really do. I really, that's a good pick. That's a good, but today is just not the day to be in it, all right? I'd wait for a better buying opportunity. NKLA, man, that stock was moving sideways and finally took a dip below the 20-day exponential moving average. Woo, if I'm in it, 
Today is probably a good day to think about taking your, your money on it, especially if you got in back here. The stock really just went up and then went sideways. Uh, RT still above one, but falling hard. Look at that, falling hard and earnings per share. Yeah, I'm not feeling this stock. Today is probably a good day to get out of it if you own it, only because just from a, uh, a longer term perspective, look at the 20 day exponential moving average, it is now cross below it. Next stock, CMBM, Cambium, Telling Network. RT, and, and this is a couple of things as a subscriber I like to look for. How about the stock's price going above the 20-day moving average and RT going above one? Was that a great combination? And guess what, folks? If I want to find stocks like this, I could go to the Unisearch tool and create a search where the stock's price is going above my moving average and RT going above one. Beautiful entry. Stock's price has had <clears throat> some jagicity going on. Up candle today, nice, good up day, very little wick at the top, challenging the three-month highs. If I'm not in it, let's see if we can go above that three-month high before I pull the trigger on it. If I am in it, leave it alone. It's nicely above the 20-day exponential moving average and staying above there, I'd leave it alone, all right? Watch the earnings per share, though. That's what I don't like. Um, remember, earnings is the engine that drives the stock's price higher, but not in this case. Oh, man, FUV. I like that one, too. Let me give you applause. Love that it's above the 30-day exponential, 20-day exponential moving average. Nice up there. A little bit of give back with a wick at the top of the candle. But the body of the candle, the open body of the candle is a lot bigger than the wick. That's just a little give back. Nice move. Gapped up today. You notice that the stock's price is so far away from the 20-day exponential moving average. You know when that happens, I lower it. Let's put this on a 10-day. I'd rather now get out on the 10-day, breaking below the 10-day. I get to take my profits a little quicker. All right. Let's go put this back on to a 20-day. Let's go to the next stock. Next stock. Woo! Apps. Another good moving looking stock. Look at that. I'll uh, give you a hand applause on that one as well. Uh, the stock's just moving up way above the 20-day. Again, this is an opportunity where I move it back down to a 10. I'd rather trade it off of the 10 than the 20. Look how it moves, tracks price a little closer. I'm able to take, now even more, you say, man, it's still high. Let's go, let's go make this moving average fit the stock. Now I'm at a six day moving average. I like that for this individual stock. And if it breaks below, I'm really taking profits early. I don't ever mind adjusting a moving average <clears throat> to form its own trend line on a stock. So on apps, I would be looking at a 20 day ex, a six day exponential moving average to manage the trade. All right, hopefully that makes sense. But again, give you a hand clap on that. Let's go to the next one. Uh, do you, again, another stock that's nicely above the 20 day exponential moving average. Don't like the earnings per share. Let me go back to the other one. Do I like the earnings? I did like the earnings on apps. I don't like the earnings on do you. Uh, it's falling, even though the stock's price is above the 20-day. I do like that RT is above the value of one, um, but I'm just not feeling the earnings. Stock is moving higher. I put my order in 12 cents higher and notice that it's far away. Let's go put this on a 10-day first. Yeah, there you go. 10-day on do you is a good way to manage the trade. Good way to manage the trade. If I'm not in it, though, <clears throat> let's go higher than the high. Let's go higher than the high. All right, now, Novax. All right, I'm still on a 10-day exponential moving average. I think it serves as a good job here as well. RT is high. Earnings is getting better. Look at it. It's gone from negative earnings over the last three months to now positive earnings and moving higher. I like that. I'm going to give you a hand clap on that one as well. This is probably a good coronavirus stock to keep in mind. Now, even though it's above the 20-day exponential moving average, watch over the last one, two, three, four, five, six days, the stock is moving kind of sideways. But it is above the, this in this case, the 10. Uh, leave it alone. Leave it alone. If I'm not in it, though, I'd wait to go higher than the three-month high before I pull the trigger. Um, AMD, a lot of channeling of AMD, moving sideways in a nice big channel. I do like that it's being pronounced in this nice big channel. 
I'd have to use something like RSI or stochastics to play the bounces off of these supports or retracements off of resistance in order to, to trade this. It's in a trader's channel right now. Long term, I don't know if I need to be in it. Long term, I'd rather have my money in a stock that's moving like apps or something like that. AMD, if this is a long term play, leave it alone. If it's not a long-term play, you might want to think about getting rid of it and going into another stock that is currently moving higher. I do like the earnings per share, but as it's moving sideways, relative timing is falling. That makes sense. Why does that make sense? Because the stock is not moving up. It's not moving down. RT is not telling me the stock is in a continuing uptrend. So just keep that in mind. Let's go to the next stock. Switch. Same kind of, in, same kind of thing right now. In a channel, broke out of the channel, but look at the green solid candle. It's challenging this formal level of resistance of 1801, uh, 1861. It was a level of resistance. It broke through and now challenging it. I wait to see if it's got an opportunity to bounce off of where it is right now and keep moving higher. RT is moving lower. That's because the channel, the stock's in the channel. Earnings has been consistent. All right, earnings has been consistent. Let's go to the next stock. Tiger, Woo! moving sideways, skirting with that 20-day exponential moving average. Earnings fell off the face of the earth. Look at that. That's not a good sign, all right? That's not a good sign, especially knowing that earnings is the engine that drives the stock's price higher. RT is still above the value of 1, exactly above the value of 1.5, but the stock is moving sideways. As it continues to do that, RT will fall. RT will fall. If you're in it, leave it alone unless it breaks below that 20-day exponential moving average. J9, the miners. <clears throat> Red candle because it's lower than the previous day's close. Open candle, which means it's higher than today's open. A lot of wick on J9 to the upside. That's a lot of selling pressure. I gave you my story on gold. It was on Nova Gold. I'm just saying be careful with the gold stocks. This is a lot of selling pressure on the junior miners right here on JNUG. All right, if you're in it though, it's above the 20 day, it's above the 10 day exponential moving average, RT is above one, all of that is good. But today's activity shows me I got a little bit of bearishness kicking in. All right, T, Toronto Dominion Bank, um, in a downtrend? It is in a downtrend. <clears throat> Stocks price just recently went above the 20, uh, in this case, the 10-day exponential moving average. I'm going to put this back on the 20. Just put it back on the 20. There it is. Recently went above the 20-day moving average today, challenging it now today as well. RT is matriculating around the value of one, telling me uptrend, downtrend, uptrend, downtrend. The stock is moving sideways. If I don't own it yet, I'd like to see it uh, close above that 20-day exponential moving average and get out of its own way. It's got to get out of its own way as well. All right, next stock. Woo, Square. Another hand clap. Love. A lot of these stocks that look like this are what we call ruler stocks. I could put a ruler on the board or on the screen and it's just moving up. Now, I like the price movement. I don't like the earnings per share. I do like relative timing. The stock is definitely moving higher. Moving, 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 moving. Earnings per share, again, is the engine that drives the stock's price higher. I'd love to be in a stock that's not only rising with rising RT, but with rising earnings as well. I'm not getting the rising earnings, but I'm not going to displace that the stock is moving higher and nicely above that 20-day exponential moving average. Today is not the day to get in, though. The stock is, is down today. AT&T. Mm. Wow. Stock is below the 20-day exponential moving average and has been for the past almost three weeks, okay? Um, let's go take off that level. Delete. Yeah. I It tried to break above yesterday and didn't stay above. It tried to break above today. When I say above, it tried to break above that 20-day exponential moving average, but it's having a hard time doing that. I'd like to see the stock's price break above that 20-day exponential moving average and RT run up above one. RT would tell me that the stock's then in an uptrend. Watch earnings per share, though. Earnings per share is moving down. Just be careful with stocks that you buy long that have falling earnings, all right? Let's go. Mark, Mark says. Uh, Mark who? On, Mark Norton. Okay. Says you're still on a 10-day moving average, but keep saying 20. No, I'm back on the 20. Oh, okay. I'm back on the 20. I moved back to the 20. All right. Um, another gold company. Look at this. So we what other stuff? We looked at another gold stock today. What did it have? 
A lot of selling pressure, just like AXU. Look at the big wick on the top. Look at the big wick on the top. And here was a level of resistance. Touched, touched, broke through today, now back below it. On this stock, that level of resistance is strong. It's like, it's like Luke Skywalker. The force is strong with this. Uh, that level of resistance at 229 is strong with AXU. That stock's got to break through that level of resistance. It's got to break through that level of resistance. You gave me, oh, don't even, don't even come out your face and say that, Joey. Joey's like, how many more you got? Yeah, Joey, you gave me all of these stocks. By the time I'm done, I'm not going to have any voice left, and I'm going to kick you just like this. It's going to be your fault. All right. It's going to be, it's not going to be me falling. <laughs> Love, American uh, Southwest Airlines moving sideways. A lot of sideways move on it. I look at RT. RT is pulling back just a little bit. Um, as the stock's price is falling and earnings per share, this is, uh, we saw that story. Uh, the government might be giving them an, a, a, a handout. I don't want to call it a handout. It is, it is, it's, it's some kind of stimulus. All right. And, and they need it. They need it. They did have a bump up, and then look at it fall back again. Earnings per share is just not a very happy thing with uh, uh, um, Southwestern Airlines. It's doing a little sideways mambo. It is currently above the 20-day expansion moving average, but just be careful. Crowd, another hand. I like that. I like that. Look at that. 20-day exponential moving average, moving higher. Nice open day-to-day, -day, challenging the three-month highs. I like it. I like it like that. I like it like that. I like it like that. All right. Joey's looking at his watch telling me I got to finish up. Well, if you wouldn't have given me all of these stocks, Joey, I'd probably be finished right now. Wow. I, I need you there. I need you, I need you, there. I need you there. Tell Joey, I, I need stocks. you there. All right. I like CrowdStrike. Very good looking graph. Nice open candle today. Very little wick. I love that it's challenging that three month high. I'd get in 12 cents higher than the high. Love it. And the earnings are the earnings may still be negative, but they're getting less negative. I do like it a lot. I like it like that. I like it. T E R. Sideways move. Clearly above the 20 day exponential moving average, right? Earnings per share looks good. Relative timing looks good. Clearly above the 20 day moving sideways. I wouldn't say no to this. I'd like to see it get out of its own way. Let's go put up. A level of the horizontal line, yeah. I'd like to see it get above this level of about 8,508. That's a beautiful level of resistance over the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days. Let's get out of that level. That would be a good buying opportunity. Love the earnings, love the RT, love the price movement. Yeah, I like that. Man, Joey gave me a lot of stocks today. AKAM. Stock had a beautiful level of support sitting at about uh, 98.44, broke above, uh, br bounced off, went above the 20-day expansion moving average, jumped up, gapped up. Look at the earnings per share. Look at the jump up in RT. I like that as long as it's 12 cents higher than the high. The stock was definitely in a channel, broke out, and now running up. I do like that. Uh, SBSW, don't like the earnings per share, moving down. RT, pretty steady. Stock is above the 20-day, but look at that channel. You know, I love that the VectorVest software will draw these lines. So as soon as I open up a stock graph, I can clearly see where the stock is. It's in the channel. Love it. Here's that level of 901, which is a level of resistance. One, two, three. Currently, Ford, it cannot break through. I need the stock to break above that level of resistance before I take it, even though I know earnings per share is moving lower. All right? I like it as long as it can break above that. Am I down to my next to last? Yeah, next to last. Sedge. Earnings is lower than it was three months. Relative timing is good. Stock did clear above the 20-day exponential moving average. See that? That's called a doji. That's an indecision. The open price was 143.81. Right now it's at 143.99. Little body, little itty teeny weeny body. Not like Joey. Joey's a big body. Um, that's a little itty bitty body. That was so wrong. It was funny though. That was so funny. Um, little itty bitty body. That means it shows me a level of indecision. A level of indecision. I'd really like to see the stock's price continue to move higher above that level of um, 
the trading room. Is Vector Vest good for day trading too? Yes, the Vector Vest. We have a trading room uh, in the Derby. There's our jockey club. All right, we do have a day trading room uh, that Steve Chapel, primarily Steve Chapel and myself, will do. But there's the jockey club for our day trading room every mo every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 10:30. All right, here's the last stock, Zebra. No, you got three more. No, oh, do I really? Mm. All right, so Zebra, a little bit of a sideways move right now. Here's a level of support sitting at 248.71. All right, a good level of support, bouncing back and forth, moving sideways though. Earnings doesn't look so good, and relative timing is pulling down a little bit, but that makes sense as the stock is moving sideways. Another stock that's got a little bit of indecision with a little doji body going on today. Joey says, I've got three more stocks. Go ahead, Joey. Uh, VXRT. VXRT. DKL. DKL. OSTK. OSTK. All right. VXRT was a stock that we made a lot of money on back here in the Jockey Club. We made, made over 100% on this stock in our trading room. All right, then it gave it all back, blah, 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 blah. Right now, this is one of the coronavirus stocks that right now are pulling back. You know why it's pulling back? This is still a lot of profit taking. Think about it. On 623, the stock closed at $2.57. Oh, sorry. On this date, let's go see. Uh, there it is. 623, the stock closed at $2.66. Three days after that, the stock went up from 266 to a high of 1430. People are still taking profits on this stock. People are still, I'm not telling you to take this stock yet. Let this stock finish with its um, profit taking, all right? I'm not touching this stock right now. I know it's clearly above the 20-day exponential moving average, but there is um, a story behind it. Big jump in the stock, a lot of profit taking. I'd leave it alone. I'd wait for a better buying opportunity. Next one, DKL, petroleum. We took a look at petroleum. What did I tell you about petroleum? It may not be the right time to buy. Uh, DKL is currently below the 20-day exponential moving average. I do like that the earnings is higher than it was a week ago. Watch the relative timing is pulling back as the stock's price is pulling back as well. Two days of indecision. The stock is having a hard time making up its mind what it really wants to do. So just keep that in mind. If you own it, you probably should have been out of it on 623. If you're still holding it now, let me give you a line in the sand. If you're still holding it right now, here's a level of support sitting at a value of 2242. If it goes below that level, you probably really should think about closing out of the position. All right, so I've given you a line in the sand. Uh, the last stock here is OSTK. That's a good looking stock. Above the 20 day exponential moving average. Nice hitting a new high today as well. And uh, look at the relative timing. Look at the earnings per share. Earnings per share is still negative, but less negative. So you know what I'm going to do this week? I'm going to give you a stock pick that I like, and this was it, CNC. CNC. This is the stock pick. Uh, was it? Was that the one I wanted? Uh, that ain't it. What was the stock? What was the, what was the, the uh, coronavirus stock that I like? Dang, nabbit. I forget. Oh, I'm going to go find it. CNC and Gilead. No, that wasn't it. That wasn't the one I wanted. Let's go back. There was a coronavirus stock that I did like. Um, let's go up to... I'm going to find it. Uh, time we got all day. Uh, I don't have all day. Uh, oh, it was CNC. CNC for the good upside. How about... I don't want VXRT either. Oh, I'm not going to give you a stock pick for the week. All right, I got to, I'm going to work on that. I'm thinking about possibly giving you a stock pick every week to keep your eyes on. Well, this, uh, there was a stock that I wanted, but I forgot what it was. I forgot what it was. I apologize. All right, I'm done. Whew, that's a lot. Thank you all for being here. Ooh-wee. There we go. Drop the bomb on me. Drop the bomb on me, baby. Drop the bomb on me. All right, I'm done. All right, can I see the chat now before I leave? Joey's going to give me my chat so I can talk to you guys before we leave. Man, that was a lot of stocks today. Oh, man, that was a lot of stocks today. Thank you, VV Nation. Thank you, VV Nation, for being here. Thank you guys for um, supporting the VV Nation. 
I am tired today. I don't know why I'm tired today, but I am really tired. You guys take a lot of energy out of me. I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. All my new people that were here, thank you for being here. Remember to subscribe to the page. Comment, like, subscribe. Once Joey puts these videos up, please comment on them. Tell me what you do, what you like, what you don't like, what you like to see. All right, so, yeah, I know. Somebody's told me to take a nap. Man, maybe I do need to take a nap. You think I need to take a nap, Joey? Yeah. Wow. I don't like you sometimes, Joey. Joey's my good friend. He is my, my producer. He, he does a lot of work in the background. Joey, say bye. Bye. All right. So, guys, have, your great, have a great weekend this weekend. Enjoy the day off. Enjoy family and friends. Be, be safe. Be safe. Joey is right. Be safe out there. Um, wherever you go, protect yourself. All right? That's all I'm going to say about that. Just protect yourself and be safe. Adios, Aviva Dirty. Ciao. Peace, peeps. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Now, if you're new to the software or would like refresher information about the software, click on this Getting Started video right here. Thanks to all of your input, here's a YouTube video that we think would be perfect for you. Click right here. If nothing else, folks, just hit the subscribe button right here.